Here, I've made a slot workout for those of you who might not understand slot very well. Here, I've set up a problem that is permutation problem. And again, remember, you only use slot for permutation. Slot cannot be used for combination. Here, we have four male and six female auditioning, including John and Alice. And this cast is going to be Romeo, Juliet, Juliet's mom, and female sidekick. For those of you who don't know, Romeo is male, Juliet is female, Juliet's mom is also female. So here we first want to find out the number in the sample space. Again, this is a permutation because all the rows are distinct. That's what makes it a permutation. Order matters because rows are distinct. And if that's a little confusing, here's here's a suggestion I have for you. If you can't figure out whether a problem is permutation or combination, you can go ahead and draw the slots. And then I want you to name the slots and see when you name the slots whether the slots name should be different or not. Here we're going to have Romeo, Juliet, Juliet's mom, and sidekick. So obviously these rows are all different. If all you can say is ball, 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 and ball, then that's going to be combination and you can't be using slots anymore. You'll be have, you have to use combination because order doesn't matter. So here, let's start filling out the numbers. Here first thing, understand that the number of slots you have are the number of distinct rows that you have. Each rows, each slot represents a row. Here we have the four rows, so we have four slots. Now we're going to fill in each of the slot. And so what, no, what exactly what exactly number goes on here? What does that number mean? Well, we're going to fill in a number here for the possibilities that this row can be filled by the pool we have to choose from. The pool here we have to choose from is four male and six female. Well, how many possibilities does that give for the slot Romeo to be filled? Well, Romeo has to be a male, and female cannot fill in this cast. In this play, we don't do... We don't do that. So here we have four male that can fill in the role of Romeo. With the same logic, six female is going to be able to fill in the role for Juliet. What about Juliet's mom and sidekick? The thing you have to remember is that Juliet is filled by some female already. And that female cannot fill Juliet's mom's role anymore. But the rest of the five still can. So we're going to take one away, which means this is going to be five possibility for Juliet's mom. Because there were six female for Juliet, and then one, one of the female filled Juliet, so there are going to be five female that's left for the role of Juliet's mom. And in the same way, we're going to have four left for the sidekick. So here's our sample space. You multiply that out, which is going to be 480. Now we want to figure out the probability that John is chosen. Again, the probability is going to be the number of elements divided by the number of elements in this set divided by the number of elements in the sample space. And from here on, I'm going to write out the four slots exactly in the order of Romeo, Juliet, Juliet's mom, and sidekick. So I'm going to not, I'm not going to rename the slots every time. Here again, it's going to be four, six, five, four for the sample space. So how do we figure out the number of elements that John has chosen? Well, remember, the logic of what number goes on a slot is the number of possibility that slot can be filled. Now look at the Romeo slot. How many possibilities are there in this scenario? The scenario where John is chosen. Well, John have to be chosen, and there's only one male row, which is Romeo. 
So John have to be Romeo if John is chosen. So that leaves one possibility for the role of Romeo, namely John himself. And for the rest of the three female roles, there are going to be no effect from this condition. So still 654 here, and we can here cancel out the 654, and the answer is going to come out to 1 fourth. Next, we want to know the probability that Alice is chosen. Now, this one is a little bit more complicated. So again, let's write out the sample space in the bottom. And the reason it's more complicated is because now let's look at let's look at the again with the same logic, the number of possibilities going on each slot for each row. Romeo is still going to be four, four male filling it. There, that's that's going to be no change. So Alice have to be chosen, but Alice can be be chosen for one of each of the three rows, and there's going to be no way to include that all in one representation of slot. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put Alice in the row of Juliet, and then have the rest of the five female and the four female fill in for the rest of the two slots. So here we're 4154. This scenario is going to be Alice is chosen for Juliet. That's not all, because if Alice is chosen, she can also be chosen for Juliet's mom, or she can be chosen for the sidekick. So here we're going to have 4514, where where Alice is chosen as Juliet's mom, and then again four, five, four, one, for Alice, cho Alice chosen to be sidekick. So here are really th you have there are three scenarios that would make this Alice is chosen work, and we have to add them all up because this is multiple scenario. It's one or the other, so or we are going to add. Here. And if you see here, 4154 when you multiply them, it's going to be the same as 4514 and 4541. So for simplicity in the future, we can really actually think of this multiplied by 3. And a simpler way to think about that is, well here's Alice. We can switch Alice into this slot. And then we can switch Alice into this slot. So one switch, two switch, that's going to make times three. And then again here, five, four can be canceled. This four can be canceled as well. So this is going to be three, six, or one half. So the next one, we want to know probably John and Alice are both chosen. And we're going to be using the exact same logic. Again, sample space in the bottom. And for the top here, the number of the, the number of possibilities to fill the slot Romeo is going to be one because John have to be chosen. The number of slot that can fill Juliet. Let's have Alice fill Juliet first, so one. And then five female left to fill. Juliet's mom, and then again four female left to fill the sidekick row. And here you have to remember again, a lot of students make this mistake and make this the final answer, that Alice can fill Juliet's mom, and Alice can fill the row sidekick. Again, this is one switch, so times make that times two, and here's another switch, so we're going to make it times three again. And it comes out to be one eight. This last one is probably the most complicated. John or Alice, one of them is chosen, but not both. Here, if you try to do it in one in one go, 
with one set of slots, that's not going to do it. What we have to do here is actually separate them out. And here, how do you know to separate them out? Well, because if you don't separate them out, you're going to find that you will never get, it, get this done. So here we have to think of one scenario where John is chosen and Alice is knocked. And then another scenario where John is not chosen, but Alice is. That's what this means. John or Alice is chosen, but not both. So for John to be chosen and Alice not to be chosen, again we go back to the slots and look at how we fill them out. Again with the same logic we've been using, the slot Romeo can be filled by one, namely John. So now what number goes here? Well, we are considering the scenario that John is chosen but Alice is not. So we have to exclude Alice from the possibility of Juliet, which leaves five female instead of six for the slot. And then the subsequent female rows, again, you minus one. So Alice is effectively knocked in the cast, and John is. And this is a or scenario between these two. So we're going to add. This scenario, John is not in this cast. So we exclude John from the four, fee four male auditioning, which makes three male. And now again, we have to put Alice in here, which makes one. Five, four. So Alice, Juliet, some other female, some other female is Juliet's mom and sidekick. Five, four. And again, do not forget to include the possibility that Alice can be switched for this row and this row as well. So again, there are th there's three different possibilities for Alice to be filled. We have to take this times three. And also be careful, we're not taking the whole thing times three. Because here, John can't be switched. And this is one scenario in itself. So this part is not going to get multiplied. And this part is going to get multiplied by three. Here five and four are the common elements from all of these. Here we have one plus nine on top, which is ten. And then here we have twenty-four in the bottom, which is going to come out to 512. So I hope this video gives you a clearer picture of how slots work. And again, if you run into any web work problem or any other problem that you have trouble with, you can always go to the submit a problem under the homework help.